So today the topic is actually foundation for important uh, buildings. <clears throat> it's very important topic and very um, timely, useful. And I hope that everyone can uh, get a very good knowledge on the uh, the foundation about the foundation. So so we are I mean the so all are waiting for uh, the the lecture. So we'll start uh, the lecture immediately. So without wasting much time. Okay, yeah, okay. sir. Professor Jaising, over to you, sir. Yeah, okay. Right. Thank you, Trima. Thank you, Trima. Yeah. Right. So basically, I mean, every structure, we need a foundation. And the first thing is, you know, now we are a small country, tropical country. And we have so many different uh, soil types. So what I thought was, uh, first I will explain why we have so many different soil types. What are the main features of the soil? So that you know, we can get a first uh, brief insight into, uh, deep insight into, that the reason for having different types of soil in Sri Lanka. That is the first thing, right? So once we know the reason for having different types of soil, then we see how we can have different types of. Uh, just one moment. So basically, uh, if you look at, uh, so for this, we are to look at the geological uh, nature of our soil, the geological history. So about uh, 2000 billion years ago, all these continents were together. So basically, uh, the Africa is like this, it comes like this. And uh, India and uh, India, Australia and Sri Lanka all together. And then uh, India started drifting away from Africa and Australia went in another direction. Also Australia broke away from India. And uh, when, when this movement took place, there was a small burning patch in the world. So what happened was we are having metamorphic rock. And our metamorphic rock became real rock. Because it has gone through this particular burning patch. And because of that reason, we can see that, you know, we have the bedrock. So initially, all these countries are out of bedrock. And then, you know, due to geological, you know, the, the, the weathering, you know, we got uh, outer crust converted to soil. And this soil is called residual soil. And uh, this residual soil, we, sometimes we call it laterite soil. Or sometimes we call it kamuk soil. Now, what is the feature of this Kabuk soil? Kabuk soil or laterite soil, they are all very strong soils. And uh, if you look at the composition of the soil, uh, you can get about 30% fines. And these fines will have you clear. For a while. Professor, can I disturb you for a while? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so your your paper uh, there is something I think it's a phone it's covering a little bit to the right corner right top corner the sheet is little bit oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah no no I, I'm actually there's a yeah. so I'm, I'm actually keeping it uh, low below the, uh, the 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 corner this corner is uh, just below the computer thank you so <laughs> much. Right. Oh, no, okay, thanks. Sorry. Oh, yeah, right, right. Okay, thank you. So, 30% fines, and uh, you get about uh, the clay and silt. Now, one of the features of our soil is the clay content is very low, and silt content is, silt is the rest. So, when if you, now, now, we have various applications of soil. One is agriculture. And one of the problems with this particular soil is it contains gravel, sand, 
and fines. Fines can go up to our 40, 45 percent as well. And sand will be uh, some percentage and gravel will be that. And if you want to use this, uh, this soil for agriculture, the first thing that you have to do is you have to sieve it through something like uh, 20 millimeter sieve or something like that. Get rid of all the gravel, big particles, and then only you can use it for agriculture. So this soil, if you are using it for agriculture, you have to sieve the soil and get rid of all the large particles. Large particles are not desirable for agricultural activity. Then we also have another problem. We have silt. What is most the best for agriculture is clay. And so we have very little clay. So we have a lot of silt. Because of that reason, when British people came, they brought a lot of uh, their plants and they found, you know, Sri Lankan soil is not very good for agriculture. Because why? They found the soil available in England is full of clay, whereas the soil available in Sri Lanka has more silt. Then they thought of various plants that are good for this particular soil, and they came of uh, came across of coffee and tea. They found this particular soil is very good for coffee and tea. So basically, the, the situation is we have a soil, which is a residual soil. We call it laterized soil, very good for construction, not so good for agriculture. So that is the, that's why when you want to do agriculture, you are always and you know, convert this soil to different materials. So what you do is you add a layer of green leaves, soil. So you add a layer of green leaves, another layer of green leaves, another layer. So in between you get soil layers. And we allow these to decay. And in that process, we create a lot of microorganisms. So, and then these microorganisms will make the soil very fertile. So we say it's good for agriculture. So if you want to do agriculture on this soil, you have to bury green color leaves, green color leaves. So the, uh, the leaves that you can bury will be uh, something like uh, Giricidia, or we call it Vatamara, then it can be Mana, it can be Ipilipil. Now, if you look at all these names, it can be Surya Kanta. If you look at these names, you can see they are all invasive plants. So, what you do is you, you get the you get invasive plants, leaves of invasive plants, or it can be any other plant. So what are you doing by burying all this in the soil? You are actually providing food for whom? You are providing the food for microorganisms. So when there's plenty of food for microorganisms, they can actually convert the soil to be more fertile and then you get brownish color soil and sometimes you can get blackish color soil. That is an indication that the soil is very fertile because there are a lot of microorganisms in the soil. So that is the agricultural side of it because when you use soil, the, when you have soil, we can use it for agricultural purpose, we can use the land for agricultural purposes, or we can use the land for building purposes. We can use the land for buildings, or we can use the land for agriculture. So if you are using land for agriculture, you are going for organic. The ideal is to go for organic agriculture. So first what you do, what you have to do is go for layered soil 
where you have one layer of leaves, another layer of soil, and another layer of leaves. And these should not be brown leaves, not brown. You have to go for green color leaves. Because green color leaves have a lot of food for microorganisms, and microorganisms can grow very well. Then again, you know, once you once your plant is growing, you have to do one more thing. You have to provide continuous supply of nutrition, and it can be nitrogen, it can be phosphorus, it can be potassium. So, how do you get all these ingredients into the soil? What you do is you get a bucket with a lid. Then you add, I'm just adding one formula, that is you add about 10 liters of water. And what you do is you add crushed, crushed green leaves two kilograms per 10 liters of water. And then you allow it to be for allow it to for fermentation for one week. Then you get a thick liquid. It's very liquid, and that means when you get a thick liquid, all the ingredients in the leaves, the the invasive plants will all be in the water. Then you add one is to one. That means from 10 liters, you can make 20 liters of liquid fertilizer. And every week you can add it, add about one liter per plant, or half a liter per plant. <laughs> you can add about <laughs> half a liter per plant. The plants will start growing very well and you can get a very good harvest. So that is the that is the way that you can that you have to do agriculture in our soil because we are what we are not having very fertile clay soils that you find in Europe in our country. What you have is laterite soil, the and the how you convert laterite soil to good agricultural soil is. First, you have to sieve the soil, get rid of all the large drums, and then you have to build up the soil with green leaves in layers, and then you can start growing whatever you want to grow, but every week you should add liquid fertilizer made from invasive plants. And the moment you do that, you'll find your organic agriculture is very successful, you can use it for tea, you can use it for paddy, you can use it for anything you like. And if you want to know more about this information, uh, I did a lecture on agriculture under the Agricultural Sectional Committee. Uh, so please have a, please, uh, you know, you, I think you can get the video on ISL YouTube and download that video and have a look. I have given various websites that you can uh, go and get more information. A lot of information is there. So that is about agriculture, because these days agriculture is also very important because we have to grow everything that we want because we don't have dollars. So if you have to, if you have to grow everything that we want, we cannot import fertilizer because that is also out. That means we should know how to make fertilizer using whatever the leaves around us. And this is the most successful method. And I use it in our garden every week. I have a gardener who comes and make all these fertilizer and liquid fertilizer and he, he treat all the trees, not only the small ones, he even uh, add about three, four liters to the jack tree, uh, the avocado, everything. They're all full of leaves and they are, they are bearing the fruit. And mango trees, everything is using it, and it's all become, you know, it's, you know, you get a lot of mangoes and jack, and everything is there. So it's a very successful method. You don't have to complain saying that I don't have fertilizer. Fertilizer can be made at home by using invasive plants. But now, now we come to the construction aspect of it. 
So we have a soil, it's a laterite soil, and it has full of gravel, sand, and fibers. Can contain clay and silt. So these are ideal material for cement stabilization. Cement stabilization. And I can show you one. Uh, I'll stop uh, this one and I'll share the screen. Now you can see uh, in this, uh, now here you can see this cement stabilization with rammed earth and okay. I'll show you a few things that I have used cement stabilization. Now this, uh, this uh, you know, landscaping with cement stabilization. Yeah, I'm creating the buns that I need for land landscaping because there's a cascading system on a slope in land where this area is flat, but this area is also flat, but at a lower elevation. This area is also flat, but at a lower elevation. So it's a cascading system. And these are cement stabilizer road. And what you do is once you do all this, you land chips onto it, compact the chips onto the road, and then cover it with one is two cement sand mix, uh, you take it as a liquid and then you know you spread it as uh, evenly and then using the equal broom you create the drainage path then you can get a nice uh, road that looks like a concreted road it's a concrete road but it is, there's no concrete in it it has cement stabilizer you can get a fine road which lasts for a long time without any problem and then there's another one like this. And then there's another one, uh, you know, where you can see the cement stabilization, but again, we are not covered it with cement, but you can do the, do the covering with cement once you embed three quarter inch metal or 20 millimeter metal onto it. You can uh, aggregates into it, then you can do the finishes. So it looks like a concrete at all. Now, this is another application of the stabilization, stabilized soil, but I have not shown the application in foundations yet, but you can see so many different applications can be made using this laterized soil because it's ideal for cement stabilization. And these are rammed earth wall in a, in a house. Again, a rammed earth wall. And these are retaining wall. You can create retaining walls using cement stabilizer. Uh, you can create dry waste with cement stabilizer. You can create, you know, this is a meditation center in uh, under the Buddha small one with only four rooms. And this one side, you know, you get a room and an attached bathroom. This side also you get a room and attached bathroom. And then uh, now this house, you can see these retaining walls are out of cement stabilizer. All the foundations of this house are also out of cement stabilizer. So basically, we have used a tie beam at the top of this, and that is the only concrete that has been used. We did not use rubble in this particular housing scheme. We did not use uh, concrete in this housing scheme except the small tie beam, and everything else you can see it's cement stabilizer. And this is slope in land, and to make sure that we don't have any uh, landslides. We have arranged it in a such a way that the slope in land has been, uh, you know, cut as a as a, a tiered tiered uh, ground. So there, there is one tier at a high elevation. There is another tier. This way. There is another tier. So basically, you can have another tier somewhere here. So basically, it's a slope in land, and this land has been stabilized using this method. 
And this method can be used in our roads as well because we have we see it sometimes, you know, we get three meter, four meter, five meter stops. But if you do the cuts using this kind of cascading system, the tiered system, then we call it semi tiered uh, houses for sloping lands. So semi tiered means, you know, you get one tier here, another tier, the bedrooms are here, <laughs> living dining and the <laughs> Washroom is here, living dining and the washroom is here. The the these are the, these the, these the pantry door, these are the washroom door. And uh, here you get one bedroom on the other side, you get the other bedroom, and there's a there's a step, set of steps in the middle. So they have better privacy when the kids are working, they, you know, they, they are not disturbed. And this is a this is a sloping house, and then you'll ask why is the roof in one direction? Roof is in one direction because you want to drain the drain the drain all the water away from the hill because hills become unstable when the soil is saturated in the hills. So it's not a desirable situation. So what you do is you get rid of all the water in this area, and then in, in doing so, you can ensure this this slope remains reasonably stable. We did uh, 13 houses in Goal for using this method. So you can see all this material, cement stabilizer is a good material for foundations in small buildings. And these, these ram dirt in the uh, army, army, army camp, they have a very nice library. It's all out of ram dirt like this. Right. Then you'll ask why I'm uh, Emphasizing on all these materials, today you know the problem. Bricks are very expensive because transportation is very expensive. Diesel prices are very high. Then sand is very expensive because sand is, we used to transport sand over long distances, but diesel prices have gone up in a big way. So sand is very expensive. Cement is relatively okay because cement is going around 2,000 rupees it has increased from, it has doubled the price, but still, if you are using cement for stabilization, then you'll ask, what is the, what is the, what is the mix we use? We use a mix of 4% uh, cement, and if it is under the, under the, within the foundation, you can use something like 5% or 6% cement, whereas if it is above ground, we can easily use 4% cement. And then we have other materials like Dura and all that. Uh, you know, so many other materials are there. And you can also have used these Dura for floors. And in this house, the floor is also out of Dura. And if you use, uh, uh, if you go to uh, Ulagala Resort, which is a very uh, upmarket uh, uh, chalet type uh, hotel complex, uh, which was constructed by International Construction Consortium, uh, they are actually elevated houses, and all the elevated houses, the floors are out of Dura panels. So all these uh, material, and this is another technique that we use is composite construction. The because uh, we have uh, the, again steel is expensive, but uh, sometimes you might find that the steel construction can become competitive because uh, we are using hot roll steel here, and then with the hot roll steel. We place these uh, concrete slabs and then do the do the uh, slab. Because the system is lightweight, you can go for simple foundations at this level. The reason is even on weak soil, light lightweight structures can be constructed. The soil in this area is very weak, so we went with we went ahead with rapidly constructible composite systems. And even here, the slab is, uh, Pika slab is 90, 90 millimeters. And when you cover it with uh, 50 millimeter or 60 millimeter concrete, you will end up with 150 millimeter of concrete. And then you get, you will end up with a very lightweight structure. Again, you can see the, it's an ideal solution when foundation conditions are weak. And these are the applications of Dura in uh, these are cement. You know, these again, I made it lightweight by using uh, hollow, hollow construction where I get cement 
sink alum sheet on outside, then there's a void that is created for the structure by using C channels. That is call form C channels. And then, you know, I use these Dura panels inside so that, you know, these Dura panels uh, are cement fiber sheet mounted so that they are washable. These are washable buildings. You can wash the buildings. We can wash the walls. And here you can see you get a ceiling again made out of Dura panels. But again, it's a very simple uh, ceiling. Uh, we wanted rapid construction and you know ceilings take a lot of time, but we used a very special technique for these ceilings. And that is, you know, we, uh, we use the C-channel that we use to support the roofing material to support the ceiling at the bottom lip. So that way, you know, we again added another L angle to the C-channel so that, you know, we can support all the Dura panels and to come, this building is about 45 meters long. We we did, we got some, uh, you know, trainees uh, from the Institute and uh, they, they wanted to get the first hand training. So they did, uh, this is about 45 meters long. They did the ceiling in two days. They did the ceiling in two days. And uh, so these can see it's a huge, yeah, these are huge buildings. And these huge buildings were completed in just in two months. And I can show you, this is one day, you know, and they are pouring concrete on 6th July. And they did a very fast construction on 23rd July, just two weeks after you got two, we got two buildings completed. So it's a very rapid construction method and, and structures, which is ideal for weak soil conditions. And in a moment, I'll show you why we get weak soil conditions. And this is a three-story building. Again, using the same concept. And you can go for three to four-story buildings very easily by using this steel uh, concrete composite system where we, all the steps are pre-stress concrete. And then you get uh, these ones, these are the lightweight system. Again, ideal for weak soil conditions. And uh, you know, if you want, uh, you can easily use cement stabilizer for the foundations of these buildings. And in a moment, I'll show you how to do that. Just have a look at these uh, buildings, which are actually coming up as very lightweight buildings. And you know, you know, here you are using the NERD slab system, in situ cast to connect all these walls and the slabs together. And finally, you'll end up with something like this. They are very robust structures, they are earthquake resistant structures because there's plenty of continuity with a rigid diaphragm at the slab level. And here you can see it's a two-story building. The, the, these panels are manufactured in a massive factory, large factory in Yale. And then the, the, this panel can be used for staircase as well. And generally, you know, to connect panels, you know, these are lightweight uh, structures. So you can drive six, six millimeter rods through the panel and uh, those will not undergo corrosion because the, uh, there's plenty of alkaline environment. We use very high content of cement in these panels, but the, the volume of water is only one third, two thirds is air, and how you get air is by using expanded polystyrene beads where the beads will come as crushed beads, not the, not the virgin wheat beads, not the new beads, but those are all crushed beads. And these are two-story houses that we completed in 20 days. Here, the walls needed six days, sub needed four, needed four days, then the upper floor walls needed again six days. And then, and then uh, the, this rooftop needed another four days. And you'll ask, what, what are these people doing? And here you can see some sandbags. So basically, after constructing this building, we placed all these sandbags on the slabs, loaded the structure fully, and we found that structure is perfectly okay. And it's a very robust structure and absolutely no deflection, no deformation, no buckling. And we found you can easily design these structures by using the typical masonry design methods that are given in the Euro codes. You can use Euro codes, and then again, you can see you can make this kind of interlocking type blocks. Uh, this, by using these interlocking type blocks, you can make walls because these are lightweight, full of EPS beads. The beauty is 
if you use this in a western facing wall the the heat transfer inwards will be very small heat transfer inwards will be very small and then then this is another product which is uh, which is uh, a joint venture by one of the professors in uh, uh, peradeni university professor anjit disalayaka and another engineer engineer nail nalin patirana those two got together they got a, a auto clay block plant now they have completed another plant now it's all uh, a joint venture between uh, the these professor and the other investor the engineer nalin patirana and and uh, you know uh, access engineer so basically it's a it's a joint venture and we are using noracholay uh, fry ash for completing these blocks and these blocks are lightweight again you can see if you go if you can have a lightweight structure then we can have a simple foundation and these days is a very important because we are facing a crisis in our uh, in our construction industry and in crisis situations this type of techniques are also important that is you know rather than demolishing all structures we can start repairing the old structures and using them for another 50 to 100 years so these are the uh, carbon fiber based repair methods where you will you can strengthen the structures by using carbon fibers so so those those has shown you so many different options that we can uh, use right so basically you can see we can use some simple tech and get good foundation materials so those can be an alternate rubble random rubble or concrete so if you have a lightweight structure how you make the foundation is under the way the wall comes you will make a small trench so that the the loads can be distributed so at the other places you make a thin layer of something like 100 mm thick semi stabilized layer on the already compacted so this is compacted soil and if you want you know if you think you need uh, the soil is not very strong then you can put some abc layer as well you can add a abc layer and then you know and here also you can have abc layer abc layer can be about 150 mm you put abc of 150 or 200 mm so you get a good base if you think soil is weak if you think soil is strong no need to do any of these things then what you do is you will embed record uh, 20 mm aggregates onto this concrete uh, onto this cement stabilizer and then what you what you do is you can have a thin concrete something like uh, 75 mm thick concrete and you can add some 6 mm bars here just to provide some continuity and you can get a super strong foundation which are ideal for at a very cost effective but it's very cost effective but very strong for lightweight structures for lightweight systems then you will ask what how do you, what do you mean by these lightweight systems and i can tell you what is meant by these lightweight systems and one of the options is uh, let's say we want to do a do a building so that is the foundation what you do is let's say we want a two story building you can extend it to three story two story building so what you do is you know on top of our foundation i'll consider this our foundation is a trench trench so what you do is we do a wall and we have to select a suitable thickness and something like 200 mm 150 to 180 mm would be ideal so we take about 180 mm of cement stabilized rammed earth cement stabilization can go with 4% cement and what you do is we go up to that level now we like to have a lightweight system so
So there are different systems. And one system is, you know, you cast strap panels like this, and you cast beams like this. Beams can be 200 by 150, and you place the panels, and panel can be about 400 millimeter, 45 millimeter thickness, 400 millimeter width. And then what you do is you, you can place about, if it's highly loaded, we put one eight millimeter bar, and these are six millimeter bars. And then we put the six millimeter at 200 center to center. 200 center to center. We make these panels. Then what we do is we make the reinforcement like this. We put a reinforcement, put some reinforcement, and then add another 45 millimeters. So you get overall 90 millimeter thick slab. Cast in two stages, but uh, you know it can be. It can. It has very little steel. Concrete quantity can be say a no. Instead of having a normal 150 millimeter slab, you are having 90 millimeter slab. And small beams at certain locations. These can all be precast, so you don't need formwork. And formwork is also very expensive these days. And then what you do is you will have need some round poles, which are which are not expensive, uh, because th those are things that we grow in our country. And then what you do is, uh, you know, you get a super strong st structure because there's plenty of reinforcement here. And here you have wall, and then you put additional reinforcement. The additional reinforcement can be something like. Uh, uh, best, you can design this as a planche beam, and the usual reinforcement will be 2T12 plus 2T8 or 2T12 plus 2T10 or 2T4T12. That all depends on the situation. So what you do is you will design it as a planche beam system. Planche beam of 300 millimeter depth, or 290 millimeter depth, and plant thickness of four, uh, 90 millimeter, or 45 millimeter, in situ cast concrete only. So you design a planche beam, and once you design the planche beam, you can always decide the rate. So that is one of the lightweight system. And the nerd step system you have seen there is a, again another lightweight system. But I'm going to tell you, because steel is expensive, concrete is expensive, why not we consider some other system? And that system is we make a truss out of timber. Two by two timber, we can make a truss to span about four to five meters. And all these are bolted. And the top, bottom. And if you want, you can it's make it double type. And then put. So these are web members out of 50 millimeter. You can make a truss. And use on the truss, we can place dura panels. And dura panels are very, very strong. The moment you are supporting the dura panel at 600 millimeters, they are super strong because the dura panel has a overall thickness of 54 millimeters. Because all these dura panels will have a four millimeter thick cement fiber sheet mounted to ensure that you know we can either place a carpet, the carpeting is very cheap. On the other hand, if you want to do some kind of ferro cement type uh, rendering, you can do it. Or otherwise, you do ferro cement, and on top of that, you do tiling. Or otherwise, you do ferro cement with terrazzo chips, and then you can cut it. So there are so many different things you can do, but you can create a lightweight. And at the bottom, you can again put dura panels so you get a flat seal. Flat ceiling, flat top. Again, you go up, up, and then next floor, you do a truss with eels and you place it slightly inclined, slightly inclined, and then you put a splashing, sink alarm sheets, splashing. <coughs> How it fully? You'll find then you have a sealed 
roof and a dura ceiling a super strong because of that reason you can easily uh, do a small concrete on it you can do a thin concrete on it from the like 40 mm concrete on it and after that you can use it for if you want to regain the rooftop you can use it for organic farm so instead of, because whenever you do a house you lose certain amount of space you can regain the space by you doing for organic farming or recreational activities you name it anything you like you can do use it because there's a it's a it's a waterproof roof and you have to use you can again go for ferro cement ferro cement technology where you use a chicken mesh chicken mesh and chip concrete so all these are lightweight systems and the moment you have a lightweight system you can easily have a super uh, strong foundation by using cement stabilizer because the laterite soil available in our country is an ideal material for that type of construction right uh, thima i mean are you can you understand all this yes sir yes sir it's a real understood it's an interesting uh, suggestion is that right yeah 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 yes sir very really interesting because, because this is That's the good. way forward because you guys are all frustrated now thinking how, how we are going to practice civil engineering i am telling you that you know it can be done by going for alternative materials now this is this crisis is the best for us because with the crisis now we can go for new technology because all the clients will like this new technology and have you ever thought that you can have soil less foundation material today you learned it can be done i have shown it with examples i did that project in 2013 i was brave enough to use uh soil for foundation even today you have those buildings houses are there because we did the next phase of operation very clearly and that is attention to detail attention to detail even the nigambo hospital project we use dura panels washable dura panels dura panel is out of straw the moment you put uh, water into it the the straw will start you know allow mushrooms to grow but here we have dura panel we protect it with cement fiber sheets then we make it apply enamel paint the moment you do that all these will become washable and the moment uh, you use uh, uh, what do you call uh, silicon sealer silicon sealer seal every joint in it every place where any water can go in you seal it with silicon sealer after that you can apply paint on silicon sealer it will last a long time you can easily get super strong structures lasting over 100 years by using these alternative materials when i did that construction some and you know we had to call them semi permanent structures because we were asked to do some temporary structures so some people asked what is the lifespan of your semi permanent structures and i said it can be more than 100 years so after that you know nobody wanted to ask about the lifespan of these structures because the dura panels have, have a Life span in excess of hundred years. So basically, these are super light structures, but super strong. But the important point is, these materials can decay if you allow water to go through it. So you have to make sure no water goes into these panels. The moment you ensure that these panels can last a very long period of time, and whenever you get timber, you must make sure they are treated with boron. boron treated borax treated treatment or boron treatment and then again you know you have to impregnate them with oil so you have to put the put this timber into the oil baths and leave them for about one week so that oil impregnation will take place so even if some water falls on it nothing will go into it no water will goes into it That's number one number two when oil is there no insect can attack it and when there's boron treatment again no not, nothing nobody can attack it so the moment you use uh, even average type timber like uh, elastonia 
what is the beauty of Alastonia? Alastonia is a very fast growing uh, tree. We call it uh, Yakadamarang or Avarinuga. It's, it's, a, it's called Alastonia. It's a very fast growing tree. In 10 years, it becomes mature. So you can harvest the tree in 10 years. So if you have these trees, you can harvest the tree in 10 years. And because they can be immature areas in this timber, what we do is we always do boron treatment for these. And to do boron treatment, you have to need on your long bath, long tub, and just uh, put the timber there for one week and automatically boron will go in, water will come out. You get super strong, durable timber because the Akadamarang or Averinuga is a very strong timber. We call it Alastonia. Alastonia. And then we, we put it in an oil bath and let oil go into it. Then you get a thin surface of oil forming on the outer surface of the timber. And that means the timber will, can easily last 100 years without any treatment or any other protection. And this, the, all, both these processes can be done at the site uh, using uh, two uh, ferrocement based uh, tubs that you can cast at the site so that you know the you can just put these into the top uh, you know you buy, purchase these early and just put them into the top boron treatment the other top oil treatment and by the time you do complete the walls all these trusses will be ready for ready for construction so once the, once you get the trusses they are all lightweight lightweight so you can end up with a lightweight stru structure but it but it is and cyclones, heavy, heavy enough to withstand cyclones. And here, even here, you can see these are heavy, heavy roof, and this kind of heavy roofs can easily withstand cyclones. So the structure is disaster resistant, but it's very lightweight. Because the structure is lightweight, now we can go for very, very simple foundations made out of cement stabilization. So this way, we can create a situation where we can easily can easily face the dollar crisis. So because straw is ours, durable is ours. Only thing that we import from India is cement fiber sheets. But you know, even if we create a factory in Sri Lanka, we can manufacture cement fiber sheets here. The the beauty is, you know, they always ask for uh, asbestos free. But the type of asbestos that we import here is, uh, is, is not blue asbestos, it is a gray asbestos. And even, the, you know, even if you use gray asbestos sheets with uh, Dura, it's okay, but you know, as a policy, because they want it to be considered as a worldwide accepted green material. Because of that, they are importing uh, these cement fiber sheets. Only problem is cement fiber sheets imported from India has a very high tax. And uh, because the taxation is, there's a special tax on these sheets. Uh, because of that reason, it's very expensive, but uh, otherwise, you know, but when you compare with the current prices and you know, eight by four plywood sheet, what is the price, Trima, now? Trima Aitana, what is the price? I think it's about 7,000, 8,000 rupees. A good quality one is about 8,000, or it can be even more. Or it can be going up 9,000, but a Dura panel of 54 millimeter thickness mounted with cement fiber sheets, eight feet by four feet, or 2.4 meter by uh, 1.2 meter, super strong material. It cost you only about 8,000 rupees per sheet. So you can see the cost is the cost of a plywood sheet that you use for uh, shuttering, but here you get a super strong material, which can be used as the floor of your building, lasting over 100 years. So, so, so you can see, uh, to ensure that this will last over 100 years, what we do is we have a panel, we have the one side is protected, this side is protected. So what we do is, you know, there's some cheap uh, recycled black color polythene. So what we do is we put, the polythene right round and protect these other sides. So the, basically then the, then the whole panel will become completely protected. So, 
So we can assure that it lasts a long period of time. And then uh, we use a straw uh, panel as the flow material. And in doing so, we can end up with the super light structure. And if you are doing a hotel project, you don't have to go for carpet in these, uh, tiling these days, you can add the type of, you know, nice carpets on it. Carpeting is much cheaper than tiling these days. So again, you know, the anybody coming to the rooms will think they are in a building located in uh, England or America because they use carpets a lot in those countries. And uh, the building in Sri Lanka will also look, will, will have carpets. And you know, when you have carpets, you know, they have the small problem of dust accumulation. But because you know we can have solar panels and so on. I mean, we can have air condition systems in these buildings because, especially if it's a, a hotel project, you will have air condition interior, which means the dust problem will be minimal because this this will be used mainly as uh, the condition spaces rather than free running spaces. So now I have shown you one system, right? So that is doing construction without concrete. We don't like to use concrete because concrete is very expensive. Sand has to be brought from a long distance from Mayangana and various other places. Manufactured sand also has become uh, scarce these days because explosives are not available. So crushing of rock is also uh, is hampered because no explosives. So there are a lot of problems. And all these, most of these problems can be solved by using alternative materials because Fortunately, now we are, we, we are assured of a reasonable cement supply at 2,000 rupees, around 2,000 rupees per bag. And when you consider the price of sand, the sand, sand one kilogram is about seven rupees, cement one kilogram is 40 rupees. So you can see, you know, cement price is not exorbitant because, you know, sand is so expensive and so the moment you see the sand as so expensive material, the ideal is to ensure we don't use sand. So the way that you do use do construction without sand is you go for these materials and to, for the plastering of these walls, uh, uh, we can use uh, polymer-based plasters. You know, there are, these days uh, there are plasters in the market. And, you know, if you talk to somebody like Mr. Cicero, who actually uh, manufactures these kind of plasters, you know, they can provide, they can manufacture polymer-based plasters. So it needs a little bit of sand and some polymers, and you can do the plastering for about five millimeter thickness. But uh, the beauty of these uh, walls is, you know, if you keep them without any finishes, they can stabilize the moisture content inside. So your, the relative humidity inside the rooms can be stabilized by the walls. And with that stabilization, you'll find that, that uh, you know, the interior is very comfortable. So one of the options that I have suggested is, now when you have something like 2.7 meters to the ceiling, what you do is you will do the plastering only for 1.8, 1.75 meters. And let's say 2.7 meters. So the remaining part of the wall is not plastered. The reason is, you know, I mean, if you have a wall, it is not plastered, but it has a nice finish, nice kabuk finish. That is not a, not not bad, because you know, at the level that we can touch, there's plaster. Above that level, there's no plaster, and the, that is the natural finish, so that the the wall can absorb moisture or release moisture depending on the inside moisture content, and Generally, it will be always absorbing the moisture in our tropical climatic conditions. And you can have a very nice uh, indoor environment with this type of uh, construction. So I have shown you one situation. So we have Sri Lanka, 
and uh, we have calcium deposits here. Then we have uh, laterite soil. Then we also have sedimentary soil. In these low-lying areas, we have sedimentary soils. So in the sedimentary soil areas, we get clay sand and similar materials. So if you have clay sand, then the ideal is you know you put a ABC layer on top of the ABC layer. Go with, go for these foundations. Then you are assured of a strong form. Don't use cement stabilizer directly on weak areas. Always, if you have clay sand, weak areas, always go with the ABC layer. For lightweight structures, always go with the ABC layer. On top of the ABC layer, you can do the cement stabilization and then go come up with a very strong foundation because we use six millimeter bars and we get up more than 740, the six millimeter bars per ton. So Although steel is very expensive, still six milliliter bars cannot make a huge impact on the cost. So what we do is we we put some six milliliter bars and stabilize, you know, make it a super strong uh, integral foundation, which cannot be disintegrated by an earthquake. By an earthquake, the whole idea of putting these six milliliter bars is to make sure, even if there's an earthquake. The, nothing can be disintegrated. So basically you have a very strong base and when you are doing the base, three millimeter, uh, this uh, concrete, what you can do is the 75 millimeter concrete, once you do it, you do it perfectly level, uh, not in a, not a rapid construction, with slow construction. On top of these, you can have 10 millimeter thick, 12 millimeter thick, terrazzo layer. Terrazzo layer, and the idea of terrazzo layer is after hardening, you can cut it, and in the as the chips, uh, you can have normal chips. Uh, terrazzo chips are available in the market. In addition to that, if you want a nice finish, what you do is you know you get some you get hold of some broken windscreens and crush them, and add those also as part of the chips and when you cut it you will get a very nice finish a glittering finish in your terrazzo so it will look very nice finish and uh, you can have a terrazzo finish which means no other finish is needed so the moment you do concreting you can do about 12 millimeter terrazzo and once the concrete has the what you do is you know when you do the terrazzo next day you cut it to 600 millimeter by 600 millimeter uh, with a cutter, a grinder, you cut it, cut a groove, finish the, fill the groove with black color, uh, black pigmented, uh, uh, you know, uh, grout with black pigments. So you get a blackish color thing here at the groove. And after that you polish it, then you can get a very nice uh, uh, finish, which looks like tile, but it is terrazzo. And it, the, because you have added these glass, broken windscreen glasses, glass chips, you know, it looks glittering finish, very nice finish with terrazzo. And if you want, you can add red, red powder or black powder, and you can make this terrazzo to look very elegant. So there are so many options available. So don't think the country is finished because we don't have dollars, it's not so. Whether we are dollars or not, we have construction techniques based on the materials that we produce locally in Sri Lanka. And with that, with all those materials, we can always, uh, you know, face the crisis. And the moment all these, all the people start going for this kind of ordinary new materials, the demand on the conventional materials will drop. And the need for importation of so many things also will drop. And with that type of drop in the demand for dollars, you'll find that you know, uh, you know, the people are, uh, you know, we can easily face the dollar crisis. And another area that we have to promote to get dollars is tourism. And tomorrow I'm going to do a lecture on tourism, and it's all health-based health tourism. 
health tourism and i'll show you you know what the what do you mean by health tourism involved in yoga and uh, meditation detoxification and uh, exercises based on uh, aerobics and so there are so many things that can be included but this will be very different to the type of uh, medical tourism that uh, thailand is promoting because they are promoting uh, their traditional type of medicinal systems but here we are going with the modern systems like uh, the relaxation techniques and uh, you last it's actually yoga based but uh, the modern world uh, relaxation techniques have been uh, introduced by dr ian gowle of australia because he was a cancer patient and he developed this relaxation method as a cure for cancer so there are so many things that we can include in tourism health tourism and uh, the moment we are going for long term tourism trip where they get take about 30 30 day uh, holiday and during 30 days we make get rid of all the toxins in their body all the excess fat in their body and then you know we train them on yoga relaxation techniques meditation all kinds of things and he sent a fresh person back to their country so we in that in doing the so we generate a new market not the not the market uh, you know who are coming to see all or whatever but another another segment another market segment segment and then we do this market segment in such a way that you know we love all these hotels you know in the eastern province and northern province northwestern province because those are less populated areas and also the beauty is they are all very close to tourist attractions like ancient ancient um, ruins and they are also accessible we have a superb uh, road network in sri lanka all carpeted roads though we don't have money we have good assets so we can make use of these assets and our best beaches of uh, the eastern province and what we do is we give them half board you give them half board and the idea is we treat them from 6 pm to 8 am we look after them and after that 8 am to 6 pm they are on their own so how board means we provide them dinner and we provide them lunch the breakfast and we help them to with uh, excursions or trips with by arranging vehicles to go to beaches ancient ruins or even to places like hill country we can do many things because we have one of the best road networks of asia in our country so we may not have dollars but we have roads we have infrastructure and here we are going to create a new set of infrastructure with carbon zero buildings and that's what i am going to present tomorrow so if you are interested please log in tomorrow and see you know what the kind of concepts we can bring in to come out of the mess that we are faced because the people who have gone abroad are no longer sending dollars back to sri lanka so the only way is we have to now look for new avenues of bringing dollars to sri lanka because you know we have to import certain things like diesel petrol coal all kinds of things have to be imported even if we grow everything else still you have to bring all diesel petrol all those things must be brought in and certain machinery has to be brought in if we we, are, we we should encourage our people to make more and more machinery in sri lanka but still we cannot make everything so we need uh, 
things and also we need uh, you know in next two to three years we'll again have to import vehicles because we cannot be running the old vehicles forever then we'll become a country like cuba so we have to allow all these things so that you know we have to come up with some kind of solutions and you can see you know this kind of lightweight construction with new materials and uh, lightweight uh, you know super strong foundation systems with alternative materials are all will be our future so so uh, you know uh, with that i would like to conclude the lecture where you know next time i'll show you how to design and how to model the raw foundations the inertity type foundations how to make cellular rafts and then how to make uh, solid rafts and how do you deal with the uh, laterite soil with low water table how do you deal with laterite soils with high water table how do you deal with other types of soils and how do you uh, create foundations where the weight of the building is compensated by using cellular rafts and so on. there is so many things that we have to cover and after that you know i'll show you how to deal with pile foundations and pile rafts and i will also bring in dr narin disilla to teach you about you know how you deal with the foundations according to the euro code and also how to deal with the pile rafts by using software like midas uh, gtx so those are things you are going to hear in future so there will be so many interesting things and the most in, important thing is how we face the current crisis without you know going down as defeated people so we have to face the current crisis as winners because all this crisis will create opportunities we have to be aware of these opportunities so i'll, I'll give all the opportunities implementing those opportunities in real projects will be in the hands of us with that i'll conclude thank you Prima? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's hello. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very valuable lecture today, sir. So very interesting, really. So yeah. so we learn a lot actually. So we uh, got to know many things, uh, many new things actually. So I hope that every everyone got uh, benefited with today's yeah, lecture. Yeah, actually, actually, Prima, uh, if I can get a copy of this lecture. i can put it on my my uh, youtube channel also right right so that okay, will be okay. very useful because you know then it will be on two youtube channels uh, i will yeah. edit it and will do few things uh, in a different way it will not the same right. video but the contents are the same same thing but the the, the introduction to the video can be slightly different okay, right okay. okay okay so because you know we these are very important things and also you know these show you that you know we we don't have a crisis what we have is a set of opportunities and it's up to us to take the opportunities and face the crisis in such a way in less than one year we we can we will emerge victorious that's the way we have to look at it okay yes sir yes, yes. and um, so i think there are a few questions yeah what are the questions um so we will have two precast okay. campaigners resting on beam can we consider as uh, yes basically uh, i mean when you have two precast panels the situation is you know we have precast panel precast panel but here we have the continuity with this additional bars so what we do is we have precast 90 45 mm we have in situ cast 45 mm for the flange beam we use only the in situ cast 45 mm we don't use the precast 45 mm We use only the insert cast for five. Okay, Trima, is there anything else useful? Um, so, if you can uh, just explain the 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 the, uh, um, the effect due to insects when we use this soil uh, as a construction material. Ah, uh, the 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 termites. The termites, yes. Yeah, actually, when you stabilize, you know, we reach a very high. uh compaction ratio we have to reach something like 1.8 to 1.85 and because we have cement very high compaction and we use something like 5 to 6% cement we have any cement very high compaction you will find this uh, insect the, the termites cannot attack it and if you think that termites will attack just bad boron before you uh 
you know, you add boron into the soil before you do the foundation. Because once you add boron, unless it is washed away, boron can be washed away, so, but you know, once you do the foundation, nothing can be washed away. Then you will find then it's fine. You know, you, it, it, uh, termites do not attack. And the most important thing is when you do the when you do the foundation, you do a bigger foundation, and then when you do the concreting, we keep some space here. So if the termites are going to attack, they cannot come through the concrete; they have to come around the concrete. You can clearly see that you know these termites are coming, coming, and they, then you can take appropriate action. Did you get the point? Yeah, yeah, sir, it's clear. Yeah, because there's a concrete here. We have a concrete and. Yeah. And we make the concrete slightly bigger so that you know if termites are attacking the building, we can clearly see that termites are coming. They cannot come through the concrete. Because we make a dense concrete, and I always ad advise now go for admixtures. When you do site concreting, if you are not buying ready mix and buy admixture and mix it to water and use minimum water cement ratio, then you get very strong concrete. You can easily get the 30 to 40 megapascal concrete at with side mixing, provided that you use the mix design method that I have told you. And if you want uh, another mix design method, this video will come up. Uh, I, I did a video and I think it will come up. Or otherwise, uh, did I teach you how to do a mix design, Trima? I think I um, covered that. How to do a mix design uh, in a simple way. Um, You'd better okay. let me know. If, if I have not right, done it, okay. I'll do it first as, as the first thing next time okay. uh, because I can just do the lecture and show you how how we manipulate varied ingredients and uh, and how we can bring in the admixture technology to the site mix concrete. Right. Because most of the time you do you don't use admixtures with site mix concrete, but if time has come for us to bring in all these new technology to site mix concrete. Because Euro codes allow us to use very high strength concrete. So if you can achieve 50 megapascal concrete with side mix concrete, it's a great achievement because uh, with 50 megapascal concrete, you can, for one thing is you get super durable concrete. On the other side, you get a concrete uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that can be finished as thin sections rather than thick sections. And when the thick sections are thin, heat of hydration can be easily controlled. Because we are not talking about 50 megapascal in 28 days, we are talking about uh, a lower strength in 28 days, but a uh, strength like 50 megapascal in about one year's time. Okay? Yeah, sir, so the other thing is uh, the places where uh, the durable uh, can be purchased, I mean, they're available. And in uh, rural yeah, I think, areas... you know, you type the Dura on uh, DURA panels. ICC on uh, International Construction Consortium, and if you want, I'll give the I'll give the telephone number. Just one moment, I'll give. You can contact Mr. Kamal. Uh, yeah, Mr. You can contact Mr. Kamal uh, Munasinga. Mr. Kamal Munasinga, his uh, normal number is not double seven three eight nine one five nine eight three eight nine one five nine eight, and his WhatsApp number is not double seven not six two three nine six five. He has two numbers. His normal number, dialog number is this. Uh, he uses a different number for WhatsApp. WhatsApp. This is his number. So those two numbers are there. And uh, if you want uh, uh, plasters, the Cicero is there. Mr. Cicero can do uh, polymer based plasters for you. Three two one, not triple seven six eight seven three two one. So there are so many uh, people. I mean, they are doing manufacturing. Only thing is, you know, they could not come out 
as a force because uh, all these uh, other conventional materials are so cheap but today conventional materials are exorbitantly costly so we can do lot of things with alternative materials and especially with soil and uh, unfortunately unfortunately from 2015 Uh, even the transportation of soil was prohibited which is not a which is not a, which is a very poor decision by then government but uh, you know if this uh, if soil is a material which is available everywhere in sri lanka so we must allow soil transportation because that will encourage cutting the lateral soils and making them converting them to flat land and once the lands are flat we can do wonders with those lands because you know those are buildable lands but when the plants are hills they are not buildable lands so cutting out lateral soil hills should not be considered as a crime it's not a crime because that's a good way of converting landslide free flat lands uh, from converting the landslide prone hilly lands to Uh, flat lands but not i am not talking about huge hills but i am talking about some you know some lands you know there are lateral hills and you cannot do much and i also showed you how to uh, do uh, cut where you don't have to have a uh, retaining wall because you do cuts in the steps a tiered cut and then you know you improve the drainage in that area after that you know those cuts will be super strong because when alkali soil is cut and exposed to atmosphere the aluminum oxides in it will make it a more much more strong material so that's why you can do alkali cuts but unfortunately sometimes alkali you uh, once you do a vertical cut in alkali it stays but due to human activities we make the up, up the higher elevations of these hills saturated the more when they are saturated they lose their strength so that's where you... okay trima okay sir right thank you very much and uh, i would invite uh, engineer katri to give word of thanks very good evening everyone it is such an honor for me to get the opportunity to express word of thanks on behalf of civil engineering sectional committee of iesl i would like to express my gratitude to professor mtr j singh for his presence and contribution to make this webinar series successful and to take out time from his busy schedule to grace this series thank you for inspiring and encouraging us with your knowledge and words all through sir special thanks to engineer mrs kamala gonavartane chair of knowledge sharing subcommittee civil engineering sectional committee of iesl for providing this opportunity to deliver vote of thanks and tirelessly organizing this kind of lecture series i especially thank iesl technical team social media team and all other members who worked hard to make this event a success i want to extend my generous thanks to you all for your participation and cooperation may the sweetest dreams guide you through this night and your morning be the happiest of all good night thank you okay thank you Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, before winding, uh, the, for the tomorrow lecture, yeah. so seven uh, o'clock. Seven o'clock tomorrow. Seven o'clock. That's uh, on uh, you know health health based tourism with carbon zero buildings. Right. The the so, flyer is there. If, if you can kindly share the flyer with others, it's good. Prima. Uh, all the architects, you know, invite them because yeah. they are the people who create the job. And once yeah. they came, because they have to find the architects are the ones who will find the investors. Right. right government okay. has no money so it has to be private investments so we need lot of architects within to tomorrow's lecture babe, because it's so many way they can listen later also but if yeah. they participate in numbers it's a good thing so i have been uh, you know sending the flyers to many architects but if you can also you know invite the architects who, who are known to you then you know we can make it uh, you know uh, they also can gain from the lecture and they can gain more confidence because they are also frustrated people in the current situation so it's it's time that we all give up our frustrations come out of the mess and face the reality strong, strongly maximizing the opportunities that are around us 
because all the research data is available with us. You come up with any sort any problem to us, we solve it immediately because we know we have all the research data needed for to justify. And if there's any certification needed, uh, Department of Civil Engineering, University of Maruto can give the do the can do or undertake all the certification that you need for various banks and other uh, uh, institutions. Sometimes they ask, okay, will this work? Because banks are banks generally don't fund new materials and new systems, but Department of Civil Engineering University of Maruto will, will certify all your products, uh, all your systems, because we have research data. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you very much. So we'll wind up uh, for today. We'll yeah, see okay. you tomorrow. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Good night.